Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurs on Fuego. We're documenting the journey of incredible entrepreneurs such as Terry Ria, public speaker, world class uh, speaker, and you specialize um, in the healthcare business, in the healthcare uh, industry. Yes, I've been forced. Go ahead. I've been fortunate enough to be doing this for well over 20 years as a keynote speaker, um, both in healthcare, also in technologies, and also working with municipalities. It's so the industry. The, I mean, I would have picked probably the easiest industry, maybe sports or something like that. But the healthcare industry is so complicated. It's so difficult because it's got so many different constituents and parts that. What got you to get into that particular field? It actually, tr I transitioned, it was a natural fit. I've always been involved in healthcare to some degree, mostly on an elective aesthetic side, and then got involved in institutional healthcare. And I actually have a knack and am sought out for, from institutional healthcare to help them find revenue streams, correct problems, decide if they're gonna go with a hospital buyout, if they're gonna perhaps do a merger, if they're going to look a different direction. I'm able to actually go in, reorganize, revamp, um, make the appropriate um, correct, or excuse me, um, uh, comments, if you will, and recommendations of what is going to be most advantageous for that client. I can I do that on an institu on an institutional level, and I also do that on a small level because I enjoy actually also taking small companies, companies that come to me and say, "We've got this great idea right. in the elective market. We want to go to market. We don't know how to do it." And how do we get there? And I have taken successfully two companies in the elective market um, last year and this year. They're both competitors of one another. Right. Into revenue within 30, um, 30 days in one instance and the other one in about four months. When you say you're taking these companies into revenue, what you're doing is you are designing the verticals for these companies. Absolutely. This is this is what I believe, given your distinct and competitive advantage, this is where I believe you should focus your attention so that you can create more revenue for yourself. Let's say you and I are sitting down, and this is exactly what would happen with both clients. You and I are sitting down mm -hmm. and say, Terry, I've got this great idea. And I say, all right, not only do I know I can make this happen, but we can get into brick and mortar and we can turn revenue in this instance 30 days and this other instance in about 60 days. And in both cases, that, that truly is what, what happens. I will, I like to win and do well for my clients and give, I always get my A game. So knowing that, I will actually look at a project and I have this knack of finding revenue streams. I think out of the box, I create solutions and make things happen faster than a lot of other people. I have three very strong books of business in Arizona, California, and Nevada. So I strategically leverage all of my relationships and all that goodwill for 20 years in this vertical, both you know, institutional and smaller groups, so smaller subspecialties. It's it's all about who you know where, and how you do it. Where where did you find this adroitness, and and why the healthcare industry in particular? I originally got pulled into healthcare. I was actually married um, to someone in healthcare. And he actually approached me and asked me to take over an extremely large practice. Um, it needed its, it needed some TLC and it needed it quick, and it was very large. And I it was able to hone in, correct it in about six months, and the rest is history. When you look at a company that comes to you, right? Do you you have all, all this network uh, of people that you know? Yes. And what I'm hearing is that is because of those connections that makes it m a much easier process for you to navigate and to direct this particular company into in 60 days, or 90 days, or 30 days become. If you came to me and you did not know the correct, you know, individual to go to the decision makers to get the yes, right. right? It would probably take you two years, but I can get done in 60 days. Would you then describe yourself more as a as a connector, as an information broker? I am a strategic relationship specialist. I literally will put the right people together, the right decision makers together to expeditiously put a project into revenue as quickly as possible. See, that's, that's what I need to label myself because I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
and I just need to put them together. Well, it's about leveraging, you know, our books of business. It's about taking what we've done, our knowledge, you know, we're intelligent, incredibly inventive people and using that, the using health, those skills. But, but here's what you're doing, which is, I think, um, incredibly difficult, at least from where I'm sitting, okay. is the fact that you're in an industry that it's so difficult to understand is ever changing. The different sources of revenue are changing as we speak. I mean, from a, from a healthcare and just from a medical payment aspect, it's it's very difficult. I mean, you're going from micro to SAG to et cetera, et cetera. I mean, it, it's very difficult to identify those sources of revenue. And I mean, if you identify them, because of the political turmoil that exists in election years, et cetera, they might not be, Obamacare might not be around next year to pay you. Right, so that to somebody else's turmoil is my home run. I get it, I love it, I enjoy it, and I find solutions. So I am truly the go-to. I've proven myself over time and time again in various um, it's, uh, jobs that I've taken on, for the lack of a better word, or opportunities um, through my company and is, have really, you know, seen the challenges, been able to find the solutions, and a lot of people, you know, it's, it's not their niche, it's mine. You bring your A game, but you have to have such an incredible confidence about yourself and your knowledge to steer one of these companies the right way. Absolutely. Because it could be very easy, I mean, you know, your decision uh, will affect not just this company, but the people that work for this company. So. Understand, I'm a referral-based only company. So if I wasn't hitting home runs and doing my job well and doing my due diligence, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Executive Image Arizona, Terry Ria. What else can you tell us about your journey? What What is it that is so um, I, I see where your adroitness comes in, but I guess what I'm saying is, do you have any type of competition around you that, that, or that you see other people that are competing uh, with you or against you in, the, in this particular field? No, actually, Executive Image strate uh, Strategic Solutions, we are rebranding, is really a niche boutique firm. Um, we have been around, what we do is so highly specialized for each client that I've really carved out an internal space that, that truly I invite my colleagues to help me and I enjoy collaborating with my colleagues. Is there per se competition? No. You have, uh, you're, you're probably one of the smartest persons that I've talked to, and I don't say this patronizingly, is because you found that in co-opting your to be or supposed to competition, you found them as collaborators and partners into your own venture. Absolutely. That's genius, man. You're Thank a new you. hero. I love that. Thank love you. That. But, but, but here, here's the thing. What, where do you go from here? How, how do you grow your business if you wanted to, or do you want just to stay the way you are right now? I'm currently, my company has contracts in three states. We are expanding. We are a uh, regional, obviously we have a, a presence in Arizona, California, and Nevada. We are also taking a regional contract, a national contract, and then an international contract. So we will be quite busy for the next five to ten years. Were you always this entrepreneurial? Absolutely. I have been working. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I have been doing this since I was 13 years old. I can I can admit. What was your, what was the first thing that you sold? Okay, the first well first job, uh, the good Catholic girl, um, an upbringing. I actually worked in the convent, and I put myself through school at Xavier. Wait, you you work in a convent? I worked in the convent so I can go to Xavier and get the best education possible. I paid for my own education. You're just you're just too much. That's that you know your story. Um, I just I'm running out of words because it's a uh, it's very inspiring to me to see somebody or to be sitting with somebody like you because you have all the ingredients that entrepreneurs should have uh, uh, in, not limited to that desire that uh, intrepidity that uh, ability to find 
gold where others see just maybe ashes of or coal. If no, you will. I always see opportunity. See There's always in opportunity. All these, in all these places. You know, you have to. You know, life is what it is. You know, this is the best part of it. You enjoy it. Enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy that you're helping your clients. Enjoy that you could work with your colleagues and have fun. And just make it happen. There's enough work out there. There's enough opportunity out there. And I happen to be living and being able to have a wonderful company with employees that I adore immensely. My daughter's actually the co-owner of my company. She is our operations division. And then one of our other employees Lynn Barbaris is involved with running our day-to-day -day operations. Awesome. Best advice you got? Best advice I have? Never give up. Never give up on your dreams, man. You can make it. I love it. I love it. With that, we're... Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. You can take us out. Just say we're out. We're out. I love it.